I've never really described myself as someone who has a great love for art. Art in the sense of the painted canvas. And that's not to say that I don't admire art, it's just something that never really caught in my net of fascinations. But then I inadvertently came across this painting by Nicholas Condy, looking southwest down the rugged coastline of Devon. Condy captures the stark contrast of human activity along the seemingly remote, towering hillsides, cut so dramatically by the ocean over millennia. And as we pan out further, the final third of Condy's painting starts to come into view. You see, this isn't just a landscape painting, because right now you are looking at the 1840s cutting-edge technology. And I don't see that likely because today's modern world cutting edge is something that's often computer or medical related. But this isn't. This is the physical. And I can't imagine those pictured would have been anything but mesmerised by every passing of a locomotive. And that's really what this painting is about for me. As an engineer in his mid-thirties, Isambard Kingdom Brunel's desire to head west on into Devon and Cornwall brought him here, to this spot. At the same time his father was about to complete the world's first underwater tunnel. It's not difficult to see why Isambard had little reservation that he would simply tunnel through the cliffside here. The route worked and perhaps gave us one of the UK's most iconic rail routes still in use today albeit with seemingly endless repairs and engineering works. So it turns out those engineering works aren't new to this line and have plagued it for quite some time, even before it was actually opened. So let's take a look along the sea wall from the Tinmouth side right through the tunnels to the Dawlish side and in particular let's have a look at the years before opening because they tell us a really interesting story. And for those of you not familiar with this area, well here is exactly where we are in the southwest of England. The first real clue as to the progress of the line down here and its plans for the tunnels came in late 1844. It was reported that 19 headings for up to five tunnels had been prepared. They await 3,256 pounds of explosives. And perhaps more importantly, the arrival of the chief engineer, Mr. Brunel himself. Towards the end of 1844, once again excitement continues and it's advised that the best place to view the blasting of these tunnels is from the sea. And perhaps a cautionary warning that we're still heeding today. The weather may be unfavourable and the waves plentiful for a landsman. It goes on to suggest that you should wish to see this from the land, then perhaps the best place to view it is from the turnip field just off the Tinmouth to Dawless Turnpike. It continues. The immense mass of rock will be driven from its parent bed in three layers, so that the enormous super incumbent mass will be thrown off by degrees and present a magnificent appearance for the lovers of the wild and the wonderful. The winter takes hold and we hear very little into the summer of 1845. August, delays at Star Cross and the foundation are causing issue with the opening of the line. And I wonder how much of this was diversionary from the potential trouble just around the corner along with the tunnels to the west of Dawlish. And with that in mind, we have in the same month a detailed look at the tunnels themselves. Another hint is that perhaps we aren't actually near completion. It describes the tunnels from Dawlish West. Kenaway, named after a respected fellow in Exeter, 200 yards in length, wrought with hard red rock, so hard as not to require support. The next tunnel, Corringdon, named after High Sheriff of Devon, around 200 yards in length as well. The third tunnel, a short 30 yard tunnel, Fillet, named after the Reverend Charles Fillet who resided above. And finally Parsons, the next tunnel set to be 400 yards long, cutting under Parsons Rock. Now you'll potentially already note two differences here. The name Corringdon is now Corrington, 
And of course, we are missing Clark Tunnel. And yet, just a few months on, we find another newspaper report suggesting Parson and Clark Tunnel. That's a singular, not plural. So are we actually talking about four tunnels being the original plan? We're not sure. Later in the year, November 1845, once again, note of the finishing of these tunnels. An extra 800 men as we enter winter. Lo and behold, January 1846, and we have a reported fatality. February 1846, just a few months away from the opening of the line, and some significant alterations are being made. A bridge near Holocombe is yet to be laid, and some tunnel centering is now being removed. Perhaps now we're seeing the separation of Parsons and Clark Tunnel. It's difficult to gauge from the language used in the papers. March 1846, just two months before the opening of the line and the most telling newspaper report of them all. Meeting across the West Country was held in defiance of GWR and their engineer. The implication that the companies have provoked local communities by not listening to them and continuing with plans in defiance of those communities. Again, it's difficult to determine exactly what this means, but perhaps it refers to the wider picture of getting rails and railway down to Cornwall. And GWR acting defiantly and pressing on with the plan here at Dawlish and Tynmouth, despite what the locals appear and see as a failed project. May 1846 and the line is open as far as Tynmouth. A further six months on and we're down to Newton Abbott, ready to head on into Cornwall. Whatever the cost, human or otherwise, the legacy of Brunel lives on here and we are left with one of the most beautiful routes in the country. I hope you've enjoyed our little trip along the coast here. The clips you've been watching are part drone from just a few months ago and of course some slightly older ones from 1987 and some childhood holidays with myself and my father and perhaps my more youthful years. Don't forget, as always, click on the subscribe button if you've enjoyed this video and Rebecca and I will be back out with an explore next week.